Oh man, can you even believe that we're about to start a new year? New Year's and goal setting go hand in hand, so what better time than now to talk about goals in motherhood? To be honest, I am not much of a goal setter, which seems a little weird because I'm super task oriented and I'm really concerned with productivity and personal growth, but for whatever reason, setting goals just aren't something I usually do. There's something about like sitting down and really, you know, deep in thought about my life. Like I just don't really do that very often, but I know there's a ton of value in really thinking through the upcoming year and actually writing something down. So today I am going to take you through step by step um, how to set a goal and then how to actually achieve it. I will run through, um, there's gonna be eight steps and I'm going to for sure give you an example at the end because I think that's very important. Step one is to make a want list. I don't know if you remember my video a few weeks back where I thought of 50 things I wanted. So go back if you missed that and take some time to write a list of your own. Write at least 25 things that you want. They can be actual items or something a little more abstract. So it could be like a new purse or it could be more connection with your husband. Whatever it is that you want, I want you to write those things down. And that's where goals come from, right? Something that we want. So it's really important to allow yourself to brainstorm about those desires so that you can really get in touch with what really matters to you right now. From that list, pick one as a goal. It doesn't really matter which one, there's no right or wrong, and we're certainly not gonna get bogged down by picking the perfect one. Just pick whatever is speaking to you. For a lot of reasons, do not pick more than one. Come at this from a place of abundance, recognizing that there's plenty of time to address all of these at some point if we so choose. And right now, one is all we need to focus on right now. Make sure that the goal you choose is for you personally and how you are showing up in your life. Focus on your thoughts, on your feelings, on your actions or your results. We are not going to make our goal about other people's thoughts and feelings and actions and results. The third step is to put that goal into a measurable sentence. That is no surprise. We have all heard that a goal has to be measurable so that you know when you've completed it. So create a deadline for yourself that causes you to stretch, but also is realistic given your circumstances right now. Step four is to define your why. Why exactly do you want to achieve this goal? You need a compelling enough reason to get you through all the hurdles and times that you don't wanna do it. Spend more time on this than you think is necessary, really exploring the reason why you want to accomplish this. Next, we are going to identify what Brooke Castillo refers to as do goals. Write down everything you need to do in order to accomplish this goal. Some of the bigger things might need to be broken down into smaller steps. So get really specific about the things that you actually need to do in order to make this happen. Now we need to list all the obstacles to achieving this goal. We need to try to predict as best as we can all of the things that are going to get in your way of accomplishing this. What's going to be hard about it? What? might prevent us from doing this specific do goal? Why might we not be able to accomplish this big goal? Step seven is to turn each obstacle into a strategy or skill that you will need to develop. These are then going to be added to your do goals. Now you have your goal, your why, and your master to-do list. All that's left is to make a plan. So prioritize your do goals so that they're in the order that you need to do them. Then determine how much time each is going to take. It might sound a little tricky, but do your best guessing. All that's left then is to add each item to your calendar and get to work on it. Those are the steps. So let's run through a goal together. I made a new list of 25 things I want in relation to setting a goal. And I've picked that I'd like to have more quality time or connection with my daughter. That's what I want. So now I need to turn that into a measurable goal. By April 1st, 
I will have created more connection with my daughter. I'll know I've completed it because I will have gone on a mother-daughter date with her once a month and I will have spent 10 extra minutes in her room at bedtime two nights a week. Now for the why. I want this because I'm really tired of feeling guilty for not connecting with her more. I feel that a lot. I think that she deserves better than what I'm giving her. I feel like she's at a really critical age that I'm just needing to up my game in order to match. I want to strengthen my relationship with her. I want her to know that I'm there for her. I want to know what's going on in her life. I want her to feel like I'm taking time for her and that I care. I want her to think that I'm fun. I want her to have the desire to spend time with me as she's growing older. I want to feel confident that I'm showing up for her. Okay, that right there is what I would call a thought download. It's messy, it's not always logical, but it's a lot of the thoughts that are just swirling around in my head about this specific topic. In my opinion, that's good enough. This is my why. I don't need to go through it or pick just one of these. I don't need to really do anything else. I have brainstormed and I now really feel like I know a very clear why, why this matters to me. So do goals are next step. Connection can seem pretty vague, so I'm going to specify what I actually need to do in order to achieve that. What came to my mind when I was making this measurable was planning one-on-one -on -one mother-daughter dates each month where just she and I go out somewhere together. It's one of her very favorite things. She feels like it's such a big deal and it's such a treat when she gets to come with me somewhere by herself. I'm deciding that it doesn't matter where we go. What matters is that I'm fully present with her and that I do what I can to make it fun for both of us. Maybe allowing her to control the radio or certainly me not being on my phone at all and really doing something that we both enjoy. I will break that Dougal up into three tasks, one for January, one for February, and one for March. I'd also add to that list what I'm going to call girl talk twice a week. Now I've noticed that at bedtime is really when she wants me around. <laughs> She's now done with the day and doesn't have all the big, big plans of what she wants to do with her time. And it's just a really convenient time for her to have my attention. So for 10 minutes, twice a week, I am going to sit in her room with her after bedtime to just hang out and listen if she does want to talk. I'll break this one up into two tasks and decide that I will do this every Monday and every Wednesday. I'll leave my phone out of the room and I'll give her my undivided attention and kind of just see what she wants to do. I might color with her, I might read out loud to her, I might just sit in there and just listen, like I said, if she's in a talking mood. And I might even set a timer because that is pretty effective for my kids, um, for them and for me. As for the obstacles, my biggest hurdle is going to be following through even if bedtime is running late or if I'm exhausted. <laughs> that happens sometimes and I just kind of get on edge and I know I won't want to spend the extra 10 minutes if those things are happening. There also might be days when she and I are kind of butting heads more than normal and I don't necessarily want to spend more time with her. Another scenario might be that I have something planned for the evening and I'm actually not even going to be the one handling bedtime. The majority of those obstacles simply require me to shift my expectations so that I'm not planning on having kid-free time until 15 minutes later than bedtime. I do really well following through with things once I really commit to them. So discipline isn't really a problem for me as long as I'm planning on it. So that is what I'm going to kind of implement um, is just actually making that plan. As for the times when I'm gone at bedtime, it definitely doesn't happen often, but I will just decide that I'm going to make up that missed day the following day. The other obstacle that became apparent in my thought download was my feelings of not good enough getting in my way. So to try to combat that, I'm going to add a phrase to my do goals 
that I need to tell myself after each mother-daughter date and after each girl talk. I'm going to say, I'm so happy I made her a priority tonight. That's something I'm gonna tell myself at least once. The second I'm walking away from that interaction, I'm gonna say, I'm so happy I made her a priority tonight. Now this might not resonate with you, but it does with me and that is what matters. This is going to be my way of celebrating what I've done and my way of trying to not allow myself to slip back into the tendency of it's still not good enough because I just know that's gonna happen. Remember, we're just kind of predicting. We know ourselves well enough. I'm anticipating that even if I do those things, I'm still gonna be able to nitpick and pull apart all the things I should have done differently and that phrase will help me stay on track. All right, ladies, what's your goal going to be? Share in the comments if you want. There is no right or wrong. Just prioritize something that's important to you and start building trust with yourself that you can actually accomplish it. Have a wonderful New Year's and I will see you very soon.